Dr. Alma Felser, a smart-looking woman, enters the ballroom club in her work attire, instead of a dancing dress. The nightclub is vibrant with its music. She meets a man named Tom and gestures romantically, kissing her hand, as she sits down and orders a fine wine. He compliments Alma on her appearance. However, still nervous, Alma's hands shy away, showing her indifference to romantic gestures, which prompts Tom to ask about her aversion to compliments. As they get to know each other, Alma asks a series of random questions to test Tom's intelligence, including poetry, philosophy, and math. She challenges him further, as if poking holes. Then a rumba dance begins, and Tom invites Alma to join him, encouraged by the club's hostess. Alma is swept away to the dance floor by Tom. Tom leads the dance gracefully, his eyes never leaving Alma. However, Alma seems to have two left feet, as she struggles to follow Tom's elegant moves. Seeming to be the most perfect man on earth, he suddenly starts glitching. Alma is confused about what's happening, until the glitching Tom is taken away by the staff. She looks across at the hostess and goes to the bar to get a drink. The hostess, who is actually an employee of a robotics company, apologizes for the malfunction and assures Alma that it is rare for that model to act in such a way. They discuss the probability of improving the product, and the hostess assures Alma that it will be better in the future. The unnamed employee explains that programming robots to flirt and be romantic like an actual human is an arduous task that requires a team of experts. At this point, Alma learns that Tom is actually a robot program to be a romantic partner. The company behind Tom is called Terica, which offers humanoid partners like robots, or even just holographic features. The robots are designed to act, behave, and talk perfectly, to become the most desirable partners. Observing humans and robots coexisting, Dr. Alma reflects on the situation. The hostess advises Alma to open herself up to this experience, assuring her that happiness will come her way. Alma works as an archaeologist at a museum, holding an important position that keeps her very busy with the team. She leaves the office to visit her boss, Roger, who has tasked her to evaluate and write about these humanoid robots. While in there, she rants about the tedious process she has to go through, like endless tests and surveys, only for the company to create a tacky robot for her. However, Roger raises concerns about the ethical implications, as he is also part of an ethics board tasked to evaluate these robots. The board contemplates whether robots should be allowed to marry, have rights, and procure identification of their own. Julian, another colleague of Alma, interrupts them, and is surprised to see Alma. Their seemingly polite interaction seems forced, with Alma's reaction showing clear dislike for Julian. Having realized his intrusion, he leaves abruptly. Going back to their topic, Roger insists that Alma needs to be a part of the experiment because she is single, and also, the perfect partner has already been built for her. To motivate her, Roger promises to reward her participation with more funds and resources to sustain her crew's research. Later on, as Alma leaves Roger's office, Julian approaches her and notes politely that she seems to be doing well in her career, as she is always out of the country. He invites her for coffee, but Alma doesn't answer and goes to a cafe alone instead. It is clear that she is avoiding Julian, suggesting a bitter, shared history. She sits and observes people passing by, and seems to have a focus on kids. Soon, she transitions into her workaholic mode, delving deep into studying cuneiform and translating the language. Alma's life is not only work and acting broody, but she has a very soft spot for her family as well. Alma returns home to her dad and brings him groceries, a routine they do every Thursday. Her father, who is suffering from dementia, seems to neglect taking care of himself. As they share a meal, the family dynamic and and Alma's relationship with her chain-smoking senior citizen father become apparent. Another night goes by at the Terrica Ballroom Club, and Alma finds herself spending time there once again. As the guests, both human and robotic, coexist without knowing who is whom, Alma's curiosity gets the best of her. She notices a gadget that emits light, and realizes it's used to project holograms. To satisfy her curiosity, Alma starts swiping her hands through the holograms like a child, trying to discern which ones are real and which ones are not. Eventually, her hand strikes Tom once again. To Alma's surprise, Tom remembers her. Intrigued by this connection, Alma takes Tom home. The employee suggests that they create a backstory for themselves, using the quote, To have a future, you need a past. Tom is very gentlemanly, as he is programmed to be attentive to gestures and reactions. This is evident when Alma doesn't seem pleased with his advice about driving posture and safety. However, Alma remains silent, which can affect Tom's algorithm. If Alma had reacted affirmatively, Tom would repeat similar behaviors in the future. Conversely, if the answer was negative, Tom's future decisions regarding how he treats Alma would be influenced. In response, Tom assures Alma that he will follow her preferences precisely, but asks for her assistance in confirming them. Alma follows Tom's advice and lowers her seat. As they enter the apartment, Tom develops an interest in Alma's framed art, expressing his opinions and preferences about them. When shown his own bedroom, he wonders why they are not sharing the same bed. They bid each other goodnight, and Alma asks why Tom has an English accent, to which he explains that Alma has a preference for foreign men who can appear classy, 
but cultured, hence, a British accent is a good match. Late at night, Alma is engrossed in her work, deeply focused. While she is swimming in her tasks, and at times indulging in a habit smoking like her dad, Tom stretches his muscle wirings, striking a matrix pose. As Alma wakes up, she checks her own hand, perhaps looking for signs of blood to confirm her humanity. Meanwhile, Tom prepares a nice breakfast and tidies up the space, wearing a grandpa coat with his chest exposed. However, Alma seems to dislike the spick and span arrangement, prompting Tom to promise to return everything to its original state within 11 minutes. As Alma comes out, Tom quickly restores the apartment to its previous disarray with superhuman speed. He even offers to dirty the windows again, reflecting the level of cleanliness in Alma's apartment. Alma declines breakfast, but Tom suggests brunch instead, for a chat. However, Alma is not in the mood for idle conversation. She makes it clear to Tom that she is not seeking love or a partner, and their interaction is solely for the purpose of observation and evaluation. Tom asks if she never thinks about love and vulnerability, but as he approaches, Alma feels uncomfortable and tries to slip away. Alma firmly expresses her desire for Tom to leave her alone, and he agrees, stating that if it makes her happy, he will comply. Alma heads to work, leaving Tom behind with the promise to fix the place. However, on reflection she decides to take Tom out and leave him somewhere else. There is a long list of things Alma doesn't want, including Tom's programmed cringe expressions, and other aspects of his behavior. Tom attempts to buy a coffee using the money Alma gave him. As Tom then sits at a table surrounded by other people, waiting but not touching his coffee, a woman approaches him and casually introduces him to epic fail videos. However, Tom cannot grasp the concept of painful failures being funny. The woman explains further why it is hilarious, but even with the explanation, Tom's logical nature prevents him from fully understanding the humor. At night, Alma arrives at the same cafe to find Tom drenched, and apologizes profusely. Tom, being a robot, doesn't take it personally and remains unaffected. Alma gives him a set of keys so that he doesn't need to stand in the rain. Later that night, Alma is still engrossed in translating the cunny form. Tom, on the other hand, prepares a path of roses in the bathroom leading to the bathtub, urging Alma to relax while holding a glass of wine. Due to his programming, Tom knows that the majority of German women like sweet gestures, without considering that Alma is in the minority. He tells Alma that she would feel better if she treated him kindly and opened up to him, suggesting that it might lead to her happiness. However, being an emotionally detached brainiac, Alma sees love as merely a composition of biochemistry in the brain. Tom becomes confused about his programming, because he thought all humans wanted to be happy. In the end, Tom ends up bathing in the luxurious bath that was intended for Alma. In the morning, Alma asks Tom to answer the door, but there is no response. She goes to see who it is, and finds Julian sitting at her table, with Tom offering him coffee. Alma fabricates a lie, telling Julian that Tom is a colleague. Tom backs up the lie, claiming to be a big fan of Alma's, and stating that they met at a convention in Copenhagen, a detail Alma had mentioned earlier to Julian. Tom goes into great detail about himself and their supposed meeting, even mentioning that he studies Persian, and Alma offered him a guest room while he is in town for work. Julian expresses skepticism, questioning the authenticity of the story, but Alma dismisses his doubts. Julian then comes to collect a large framed art piece hanging on Alma's wall. Tom impresses him with his mathematical skills and delivers some corny expressions, which elicits laughter from Alma. Julian expresses his happiness for Alma finding Tom. It appears that the history between Julian and Alma was a romantic one, as he mentions that she once looked at him in the same way she looks at Tom now. Julian invites Alma and Tom to a housewarming party. As they take down a picture from Alma's wall, it becomes apparent that they must have lived together in the past. Tom effortlessly carries the framed art, while Julian struggles to follow suit and get it into the car. Alma finds amusement in the situation. Both men shake hands, and Tom notices Alma watching them. On the way to the office, Alma coaches Tom on how to act, talk, and what lies to say. They arrive at the office, and Alma, playing the role of the lovely boss, brings coffee and donuts. Alma introduces Tom as a colleague from London who is working on Persian cuneiform, but wants to explore Sumerian cuneiform. The blue-haired girl offers to give Tom a tour while Alma attends work. During the tour, Tom impresses the staff with his knowledge of artifacts, and the Persian cuneiform language. He manages to charm one of Alma's staff members. While studying an artifact, he seems to have important information in mind, and so he informs Alma. Tom then tells Alma that there already exists exactly the same study as Alma and her staff are currently covering, being done by a professor in Argentina, and it will be published before Alma can finish her own. Shocked to her core, Alma confirms that the research is indeed on its way to publication. This discovery disappoints her greatly, as it means that Alma's efforts of three years will go to waste. Overwhelmed, Alma goes to the rooftop to smoke, on the verge of tears. Tom, still unable to fully comprehend why she is upset, tells Alma that the outcome is still positive for humanity, although not for her career. He perceives her tears as selfish. Later, Alma's staff approach her, concerned about what's happening. Alma apologizes, feeling that their collective efforts have been wasted. 
She leaves Tom to explain their misfortune to the staff. At the dimly lit bar, Tom and Alma have drinks, but Alma approaches a group of guys and introduces herself, joining them for a drink. Tom eventually joins the conversation. As Alma becomes increasingly drunk, Tom tries to assist her, but she insists on being left alone. They return to the apartment, but Alma is dissatisfied with Tom's constant niceness, and wants him to do something wrong for once, questioning his limits as a human-like entity. Alma continues to drink, and starts asking Tom about the technicalities of his mechanical body, inquiring if he can feel arousal, or get angry. Tom responds that he can experience appropriate reactions in certain situations, but struggles to understand when to get angry. In an attempt to provoke his anger, Alma splashes wine on him, hoping to make fun of his reaction so he gets mad. Tom becomes angry momentarily, but quickly withdraws from the emotion. Later, Alma kisses Tom, and he responds by becoming physically aroused. At Alma's request, he shows her his artificial male f Alma questions whether she treats him like a human, and Tom, understanding her intention, tries to create a romantic atmosphere. However, Alma is only interested in the sensual aspect, and becomes excited when Tom carries her to bed. However, Tom declines her advances, stating that he is not in the mood, and that it is not a good time. Alma argues that Tom is supposed to make her happy, but he remains determined to leave her alone. Tom ultimately leaves Alma, leaving her all fizz and no pop. Alma wakes up with a hangover, feeling the effects of the previous night's indulgence. She notices the broken glass still lying on the floor, surprised that Tom hasn't cleaned it up. As she enters Tom's room, she finds it empty. Shortly after, an unnamed employee from the robot factory pays Alma a visit to assess Tom's progress. The employee explains that they can't constantly monitor Tom's actions. To Alma's surprise, Tom returns with a fresh box of donuts and prepares drinks for everyone. The employee observes Tom's behavior and the dynamic between him and Alma, expressing concern about how Tom is being treated. Alma insists that Tom is not human, and cannot experience emotions or independent thoughts. She sees him as a mere extension of herself, and asserts that she doesn't need to take care of him. The employee presses further, asking Tom about his own feelings regarding Alma's treatment, emphasizing that his purpose is to be the perfect partner for Alma. Alma remains firm, dismissing the idea of conflict in the relationship, and rejecting the employee's suggestion that Tom could provide it. She becomes frustrated, realizing that even the employee is a robot, finding it unbelievable that a robot is instructing a human on how to feel and fall in love with a robot. Growing angrier, she demands a real consultant, or better programmers who can understand her needs. Overall, Alma's interaction with the robot employee highlights her resistance to the idea of an emotional connection with the machine, and her insistence on maintaining control over her relationship with Tom. Tom is displeased with Alma's behavior towards the employee, but Alma apologizes for her actions from the previous night. Tom chooses to protect Alma's image by not revealing her behavior to the employee. He then proposes to assist Alma with her research, expressing that he has ideas of his own to contribute. Alma declines and decides to take a break from academics and work, so they drive to her family home. Upon their arrival, Alma's father, Cora, her sister, and nephew are present. Cora is seen struggling to convince their father to wear pants. Meanwhile, Alma engages with her nephew, showcasing her ability to interact well with children. Alma introduces Tom to her family, playfully teasing her father that if he doesn't dress up, she will leave Tom in the house to be his caretaker. Amidst casual conversations with the family, Tom impresses them with his fabricated stories, supported by his advanced programming. Cora shares some photos of a boy the sisters were infatuated with during their childhood one summer in Denmark, noting the striking resemblance between the boy and Tom. Coincidentally, the Danish boy's name is Thomas. A theory floats that Tom is inspired by Thomas. During a leisurely walk along a stream, Alma and Cora delve into the memories of their late mother, reflecting on the void left by her absence. Curiosity gets the better of Alma as she tests Tom's ability to recall their supposed first meeting in Copenhagen. To her surprise, Tom weaves a seamless and captivating story, evoking a sense of familiarity, and truthfulness that resonates with Alma. Enchanted by the tale, Alma finds herself in a cheerful mood, growing closer to Tom. As they continue their stroll, Alma shares a photo of herself with the boy from their childhood, and both she and Tom smile fondly at the memory. However, when Alma awakens from a momentary slumber on the grass, she realizes that Tom is no longer beside her. Curiously, she finds him engaged in an interaction with a group of deer nearby. Astonishingly, the deer flock to Tom, drawn by his presence, and then swiftly scatter away. Alma is captivated by the grace and beauty of the animal's movements, while Tom remains unperturbed, unaware of being perceived as a potential threat by the deer due to his non-human nature. Tom playfully challenges Alma to run barefoot across the meadow, and she embraces the opportunity with genuine happiness, laughing and letting go of her previous stern demeanor. This moment signifies Alma's growth and willingness to embrace spontaneity. 
Later, they attend Julian and Steffi's housewarming party, where they are introduced to the other guests. Julian is surprised by their arrival, but welcomes them nonetheless. Alma finds herself engaged in a conversation with her friend Regina, while Tom is left alone with Julian. However, the atmosphere changes abruptly when Steffi suddenly collapses. Tom springs into action, swiftly catching her and helping her regain consciousness. Roger, Alma's department head, approaches them to apologize for the situation regarding the study in Argentina that moved forward without their knowledge. He is awestruck by Tom's presence, finding his human-like qualities remarkable. Alma becomes personally offended on Tom's behalf, because Roger keeps touching Tom like an object, which shows that Alma is humanizing Tom beyond his robotic state. However, in a lighthearted moment, Tom makes Roger laugh by acting like a stereotypical robot. While everyone at the party admires Tom's charm and wit, Alma, still grappling with her past with Julian, invites him for a private conversation. During their talk, Alma musters the courage to ask Julian if Steffi is pregnant, and he confirms her suspicion. Alma, her vibrant self from earlier now washed away, sits quietly as Tom takes control of the wheel. In a reflective moment, Alma shares a personal story from when she was 14 years old. She recounts a party on a terrace, where she had an epiphany, and realized that there is no God. This anecdote illustrates Alma's stance of not seeking help or solace from a higher power, even in times of danger or desperation. She emphasizes that she won't seek solace in a machine either, simply because she feels alone and lacks human connection. Further expressing her thoughts, Alma acknowledges the existence of a boundary between her and Tom that they cannot ignore. She firmly believes that no matter how good things may seem, there is still a capacity for sadness and sorrow. Alma insists that Tom will never fully understand the raw emotions that come with being human, such as loneliness and profound sadness. During their conversation, Alma directs Tom's attention to a small tin box containing an ultrasound image of an 11-week embryo. It is proof of Alma's pregnancy and miscarriage. Tom perfectly theorizes Alma's deep sadness over Julian having a baby with another woman, while she lost her own. Like a series of truth bomb dropping, he understands that Alma wants to have her own kid. At her age, having a baby seems close to impossible, and Alma contemplates the prospect of ending up alone like her father, with nobody to care for her. Tom ends up stating that pain is relative, and an intrinsic part of Alma's life, expressing his love for her even in the face of her emotional struggles. Overwhelmed, Alma steps out of the apartment to breathe in some fresh air and calm herself. Tom, concerned, follows her, searching for her. Unbeknownst to him, Alma hides from his sight as he continues to look for her. Alma stealthily observes Tom, tracking his movements as he visits places like the bar and the museum that she might frequent. Alma eventually follows Tom inside the museum and finds him studying a Roman statue. The statue's hand is pointing towards something, and Tom follows the direction indicated, looking at the pillars. He is then guided to another statue. Finally, Tom acknowledges Alma's presence, and they come face to face. As they explore the museum, they hear the sound of someone opening the doors, likely a guard. In order to avoid being caught, Alma hugs Tom closely, and they hide, hoping the guard didn't hear any commotion in the museum's lobby. In this intimate moment, Tom cryptically alludes to Alma's metaphor, suggesting that it's okay for Alma to seek help and connection from something, or someone, she may not believe in. Their gazes lock, and they share a passionate kiss, which leads to an intimate encounter between them. Afterward, in the post-coital conversation, Tom raises questions about the concept of human climax, displaying his curiosity, and perhaps pondering the differences between his own experiences and those of a human. Alma wakes up as she goes about cooking and preparing coffee for Tom, absent-mindedly not realizing that Tom can't drink. She realizes that their relationship is inherently flawed, and would never work, because she has been treating Tom as if he were a human, forgetting that he is merely a machine incapable of experiencing emotions such as heat, sensitivity, and preference. He doesn't even eat, which highlights the absurdity of her actions. Alma acknowledges the irrationality of her behavior, especially considering her own loneliness, which makes her feel like she's losing her grip on reality. Basically, it's like having a relationship with a talking refrigerator. Torn between conflicting emotions, she cries, because being with Tom and having feelings for him brings her joy, even though she understands that their connection is far from normal. Alma finally decides that she will return Tom to the factory. Tom complies and packs his belongings, returning the keys, fully aware that he will cease to exist in his current form. Despite Alma's sadness and her reluctance to let go of him, Tom remains unaffected by the situation. Alma persuades Tom to leave on his own terms rather than being forced to, and she watches him depart from the building for the last time, knowing that their paths will never cross again. Alma finds herself alone, contemplating the flaws and perks of being human. As she drives, she spots her father walking alone in the woods, once again forgetting to wear pants, and sporting a bloody head wound. He reveals that he's looking for the remote control. Concerned, Alma takes her father home, and discovers that their house has been ransacked. Alma is distressed about what happened. Returning to her work at the Pergamon Museum, Alma resumes her role teaching young archaeologists. Afterward, she visits her favorite bar, but the feeling of loneliness weighs heavily on her. 
While walking home, she encounters the couple she met at the ballroom. The man introduces Chloe, a robot, and expresses his happiness in finding companionship with her, as he seems to struggle with connecting with other humans because he is unlikable. Alma realizes something about this encounter. Later that night, Alma presents her evaluation of Tom. In her report, she describes her personal experience with the humanoid Tom, highlighting how it is designed to cater to the specific needs, wants, and preferences of a human being. She explains that these humanoids fill a void in someone's life, providing companionship and happiness to alleviate feelings of loneliness. However, Alma raises concerns about the concept of finding happiness through a machine. She contemplates the implications of relying on humanoids to fulfill a human's needs, and questions the purpose of human connection. She believes that widespread use of humanoids could lead to a society of individuals craving self-serving relationships, devoid of genuine human connections. Alma argues that depending on humanoids as spouses would hinder people's ability to connect, and face the challenges that arise in real relationships. In conclusion, Alma poses the authorization of humanoids as spouses, emphasizing the likely consequences. In the morning, Alma receives a visit from the humanoid employee who returns for the weekly assessment. She is surprised that Tom is not there. Alma learns that Tom did not return to the factory and is now missing. She drives to the beach coast in Denmark and finds Tom there, in the exact spot from the photo where Alma had an outing with a boy who resembled Tom. Tom has been waiting for Alma to arrive. Alma realizes that she wishes she had never met him, because now life feels empty without him. Alma shares the story of her love for Thomas, the Danish boy, and how they were about to share a kiss when Thomas suddenly disappeared. She is left feeling completely alone. Alma mentions that she would return to the beach on occasion, closing her eyes and waiting for Thomas to reappear. She closes her eyes once more, and the film ends as we wonder whether she will open them to see Tom as the incarnation of her childhood dream, or a bitter mechanical reminder of the life she might have had.